giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Now we're moving into our 10 through 4th team, and Andrew's going to take us off here. All right. In 10th place, we have team 694. They are the tech team, a solo team, just Frank from FTC 8581 Identificatories. And um, I really like this robot. Um, I think it's a very meta robot or most effective tactic available. Um, it's just very good all around. Um, I really like the... Um, I really like the container intake actually being inside of the robot um, because there is defense permitted in this game. And if you're hit and if you're hit by another robot and your container is kind of hanging out, you don't want that to fall out. So I really like how it brings it all the way in. And I also really like how their intake separates both uh, catalysts and toxins uh, to intake them separately. So it's not using the surgical tubing to intake those heavy catalysts. It uses belts instead. And bring them up. Um, I really like the the last thing I wanted to mention was how their intake, their container intake and lift are on a differential uh, belt differential power takeoff system, which I think is really interesting and something that I have not seen very much before. Yeah, I think once we get into these top 10s, we start to see kind of just top tier renders from every team out there. You start to see a lot more of the environment in these renders. Um, and I think that they do a very, very good job of showcasing these robots. And um, another thing that you can really see highlighted in all of these top 10 teams is that they have very solid documentation behind the robots to really show us judges what's special and what your design process was. All right. Let's see here. Moving into ninth, I get the privilege to share with you guys multiple robots that have multiple intakes on both sides of their robot. So <laughs> this is team 384, made up of Matthew, Eric, Bill, and John from three different FTC teams, 9866, 17464, and 15561. So we saw previously Team 100 had that double-sided intake, and that dropped down. This one is more stationary, um, but we really liked this robot for its coloring and aesthetic. It was super well-packaged, and it had a lot of unique features, like we mentioned, that double-sided intake. And it also uses linear rails instead of slides for extreme precision and rigidity when lifting containers. Their lift stringing was unique, and it featured a double extension, but a single retraction stringing setup. Um, the only thing we were concerned about was how the robot would be able to push the container onto the shelf, and the lack of a catalyst mechanism specifically for placing the catalyst while their intake could po possibly intake them, the lack of something to place the catalyst put this robot a little behind some of the others we're going to see coming up. All right. It's me again. Um, in eighth place, we have team 667. They are, hang on, let me find it, Potato. It's a solo team. Uh, Nat from FTC 15772, the Oysters. Um, this robot was really well done. I think that it would perform extremely well. Um, the only things that were really missing from it were a catalyst mechanism and there was a noticeable lack of custom parts. Um, really the only ones there are are on the toxin intake. But other than that, um, I think this robot has the potential to be really good. Um, my favorite part about it is the lid mechanism. Uh, I think it's the most elegant solution that I've seen. Uh, just to have the two wheels that touch on the top and pull it in. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, finding a lid mechanism and lids weren't worth a whole lot of points in this game. So it was pretty rare, um, partially intentionally, to see a lid mechanism. The other thing it was a, was that it was a big design challenge to actually properly fit a lid onto a container that's inside of a robot is tough. So once we get into these like very high-ranked teams, we can see more and more really innovative solutions to this tough problem. So I, I also really loved that solution to the lids. I don't think I could come up with something like that. <laughs> Yep. All right. Next up, we've got our seventh ranked team. This is team 494. They are made up of Justin and Trinity of FTC team 9556 Omega Robotics. Um, This team really did blow me away with their renders again. Um, And I know I talk about them a lot, but I really enjoy these. They had so many more than we could show, and it really helped explain um, and show a lot of the really fine details of this robot. Um, intake's not my favorite thing. Um, the timing belts may work okay to pull up those elements, but may not. Um, but I really loved the amount of custom that you saw on this robot. The pocketing was all very intricate and made sense. And I think that their container scoring mechanism was really nice. They also look like they'd have an ability to score many catalysts, which is very important and I think can help really show, um, really differentiate this team from another one. They really deserve the seventh ranked slot, and I really enjoyed being able to judge this robot. Yeah, I really like this robot's color scheme. I just think Mm -hmm. that the white and gold with the red accents, like on the pulleys and numbers, it just looks really attractive. Um, I think it's one of the best robots, uh, at least in the aesthetics department, that I've seen. For sure. Yeah, I don't know if that was intentional, but it does remind me a bit of FRC 118, if I haven't forgotten all of my <laughs> FRC knowledge in Europe in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, but we now move into the in sixth place, which is Team 198, which was created by Trisha, Camille, and Garrett from one FTC team, 14189. So this is a, another fantastic robot that kind of fits into that traditionally more boxy category. And if you take a look at that drivetrain, it is crazy unique. It is one of the few robots in this competition that is utilizing a swerve drive. But in order to get over the valley, they have these wheels in the middle, if you can see, if you look probably pretty closely, that um, they're a little bit raised to prevent them beaching on that valley. Their intake is on the left is dual purpose and intakes both toxins and catalysts effectively and reliably. And they score using two separate lifts, one for the toxins and catalysts and one for the container. And looking at that catalyst mechanism, something that really stood out and that we really liked was the ability to score multiple at the same time. You could hold multiple catalysts and score them all at once. Um, and, you know, with that 10% boost, that is a massive step, massive, you know, increase in a team's score. My favorite part about this robot is that it, looking at everything about it, it feels like it's kind of the wrong scale. Like, it looks <laughs> like it's a 24 by 24 huge robot, and then you kind of start to measure things and realize that they really did pack all this into that FTC size form factor. And that was super impressive. Yeah. And one last thing that I super love, my FRC team has really begun like emphasizing this in previous years, but they have that all their electronics on this side plate of the robot, which makes it super accessible for easy repairs during competitions. Mm-hmm. And is a great idea for anybody who is looking to kind of maximize the use of your time in repairs and competitions. All righty. Well, moving on to fifth place, we've got Team 793, which features Julian from FTC Team 10355 uh, Project Peacock. And to be honest, this was really, really good robot. Um, very stellar and interesting. 
And it really like turned to unique and innovative methods you know, to accomplish the same goals, despite there being, you know, more tried and true, more tested methods being available. And something that we really liked uh, was the unusual style of drivetrain compared to other robots in the CDC. Uh, this team said that they were inspired by Upper Creek Robotics and aimed to design a drivetrain with mechanism wheels on the outside and dead odometry wheels on the inside. Now, despite the fact that the mechanism wheels were in the wrong orientation in the CAD <laughs> and the uh, uncertainty of the effectiveness on the odometry wheels uh, traversing the valley, we realized that this drivetrain was a huge way to stand out from the rest of the competition. Uh, the intake itself does draw from designs from Velocity Vortex and Cascade Effect in being able to intake both toxins and catalysts. And as Ethan has said, maybe this is an intake that possibly may not be able to actually uh, intake the catalysts that well. But I'm pretty sure a little bit of uh, iteration, as the team suggested, will be able to get the catalyst intake working. Something else that we also saw um, earlier, as well as we'll see again in the robot, is a dual catalyst tube and lid arm, which uses five servos for that, again, extra granular movement to pick up the catalyst and the lids. Uh, something we would have liked to see in, in this robot as well uh, would have been the ability to score multiple catalysts at the same time. But, you know, despite the fact, all in all, this was a really, really great robot with practicality and efficiency in mind. Hmm. I, I really loved their color scheme. Um, it's a silly thing to love, but that purple and carbon fiber feel um, really did hit home for me. And in addition to that, they had a nice blend of renders that looked really cool and renders that showed a lot of the innovative aspects of the robot. Alrighty, I'm also going to be doing the fourth place one. Uh, we've got Team 974, uh, which features Adi, my duplicate, uh, and Surya from FTC Team 18275 Sub Zero. And uh, we really love this overall theme of the robot of being simplistic in design, but still effective and dominant on the game field. Uh, the robot uh, features an effective and reliable eight-wheel rocker bogey drivetrain to get over the volatile features of the valley. And the intake is built traditionally using a vertical uh, method using thick and rigid surgical tubing to collect both toxins and catalysts in one simple mechanism. Now, since this surgical tubing is a bit thicker than some of the other intakes we've seen, we think that this is a, probably a bit more capable of intaking the catalyst compared to other robots, which allow it to, you know, intake both catalysts and toxins in one mechanism, simplifying the rest of the entire robot. Mm -hmm. uh, the container intake itself is created by having two servos on either side of the lift that can, you know, drop down to effectively bring a container inside the robot. And this team says that their container holding zone can pivot down so that they can dispense a full container in the bottom row of the containment shelf, along with a dual stage lift to reach the to the upper rows of the shelf and catalyst storing zone. The robot also features a three servo gimbal that allows them to collect lids and push them onto the container with enough torque, also acting as a gate for the catalysts. And this is something else that we saw earlier and also Andrew had mentioned it, but we really like seeing those mechanisms that pushed the lid onto the uh, container. And overall, we really like this robot's ability to deposit several catalysts at the same time, uh, which was really essential for scoring major bonus points in the end game phase. Mm -hmm. I, I did really like this robot. I think it has a great blend of unique features and pretty nice tried and true mechanisms that I think have a really good shot of working super well if somebody was going to go build this robot to play on this real game. Um, I don't know if I buy the intake, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> overall, I really liked it. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.